Hi, I'm Ed, I'm a filmmaker and editor based in London, and today I want to talk to you about this, the BS1H. I work on films and short documentaries, mostly for arts and cultural organisations, and at the moment I own and shoot on a Panasonic EVO 1, which is a super 35mm compact cinema camera. I also own a Panasonic Lumix S5, which is a smaller full frame mirrorless camera. Recently Panasonic loaned me this, the BS1H, and I was sort of just really interested to see whether something like this could fit within my own shooting style, which involves a lot of handheld, a lot of run and gun, observational documentary type filming. Now, if you don't really know what the BS1H is, it's uh, a camera that rehouses the full frame sensor from Panasonic's S1H mirrorless camera, uh, but it's inside a box or cube form factor. It has no monitor, it has no XLRs, it has limited dials, and it takes the same batteries as the larger EVO 1. But because of this, the camera is sort of like a blank slate, and you can rig it up however you like. So I was sort of interested to see if the BS1H would work as a handheld camera. So today I'm gonna to give you my thoughts on that after some limited time using the camera in the field. Let's take a look. So I guess my immediate concerns before using this camera was that it was going to be too lightweight, too fiddly to use, that it would have too many things hanging off it and that it would just be a bit of a nightmare to shoot with. I was also worried that its lack of stabilisation would give me terrible footage, especially because it lacks the excellent uh, in-body stabilisation or IBIS that's found in the S1H. And I can immediately tell you that the complete opposite was true of that. I thought the footage that came out was beautiful. I loved it. And I found that, you know, even without stabilized lenses or the stabilized sensor, I was still able to get really lovely usable footage. So I only really had a weekend to test it out. Uh, I was on a trip with my partner to the coast. I rigged it out with a monitor, a battery, and then a little top handle uh, attached directly to the camera via a NATO rail. And the lenses that I use, I got the 24 to 70 Lumix Pro, which is a 2.8. And I also own a 50 millimeter Lumix F1.8. The camera is super lightweight, even with this small rig setup. And I took it out on a full day's hike. And I often just held it in my hand. It was so lightweight and easy to hold with the top handle that I didn't necessarily feel the need to put it back in my backpack when I wasn't using it. It was just easier to keep hold of it. Uh, you know, I'm not a particularly strong person. I think if I was using something like the EVO or the S1H, I would really struggle to do that for a long period of time. I'm not gonna lie, it does look a little bit ridiculous with this giant battery in it, but this thing powered both the camera and the monitor for the entire day, uh, and there was still juice left in it when I got back, which is awesome. My EVO 1 sucks through these batteries in a couple of hours. The camera also powered up in seconds, which was amazing. You know, I think I could power it up and hit re be recording within 10 seconds. For my sort of work, that's amazing. That's exactly what I need. I don't shoot in studios where I'm directing action. I'm out and about or in the field. And when something happens, I wanna 
be capturing that on camera as quickly as possible. When I wasn't using it, I could just stash it in my backpack really easily. I didn't have a special photographer's backpack and it's small size just, was just awesome. It didn't really draw too much attention. I did a bit of filming inside a cafe and no one even noticed it, even when it was rigged up. It was also very easy to quickly pack down to strip the monitor and the battery from it. Because it was so lightweight, I was a little bit worried about the lack of stabilization, um, but I, I just didn't find it was too much of an issue. Obviously, I don't have that on the Evo One and I shoot with unstabilized cinema lenses but the camera's weight tends to help stabilize it. I found I was quite easily able to stabilize minor jitters in post on the VS1H, but if it was a major issue, I would just add more weight to the camera and that would easily solve it. Or, you know, you could just use stabilized stills lenses and it would be absolutely fine. The lightness of the camera also worked in its advantage sometimes. I could get some really fun shots and sort of swing the camera around in a way that I couldn't with heavier cameras. Uh, there's some really fun shots of following feet. So if you were sticking this camera on a drone or you were mounting it to a car or somewhere, I think that would offer some really cool creative uh, potentials in a way that maybe you couldn't with a camera like the S1H. Because the S1H is a heavy camera, you know. I think the BS1H is about half the weight or just over half the weight of the S1H. Even with a battery in, I think it's still lighter than the S1H. The easy mounting points that are found all over the BS1H are just brilliant. I love that. If you're shooting with a mirrorless camera, then you're probably gonna have to buy a cage to get those. So having those built straight into the camera body to start with is really useful. And it allows you to sort of build up the camera in a way that is specific to whatever shooting scenario you're in. I also thought like the positioning of the buttons and stuff on this camera and the lack of monitor would also be difficult in terms of making adjustments for exposure and stuff like that. All the buttons are customizable, so you can assign them, you know, just speed, ISO, and aperture or whatever. And once I knew where those were, I could easily make changes on the fly as I needed to. The more I shot with a camera like this, the more I'd gain that muscle memory. So that wasn't really a problem and I could make all those changes via the monitor I was using. I think the sensor in this camera is beautiful. For me, the S5 sensor is a little harsh. It's quite sharp. The Evo one is a lot smoother, more organic. And I think the S1H sensor is a bit more towards the Evo one on that. And that's because it has something called an optical low pass filter, which just eliminates some of the harshness that you find in the S5, which doesn't have that. Audio is something you might want to consider. It has the same audio I.O. as the S1H, so just a small microphone jack. But you can buy a Lumix XLR audio module, which gives you that expandability uh, and it just plugs into the hot shoe. So if I was purchasing this camera, I'd definitely pick one of those up. The other down point might be the lack of ND filters. I think for me, I've become really used to using those with my Evo One, which has them built in, as do other compact cinema cameras, you know, like the FX6 or the C300. So I really miss those. And obviously I don't have them when I shoot on my mirrorless camera. So I use a, a Revo Ring Variable ND, which has an adjustable diaphragm, which allows you to mount it onto different size lenses, which I love. There is a Photodiox, I believe is the brand, uh, EF to L mount adapter, which has NDs built into it, which if I was getting the BS1H, I would definitely invest in, and I might still for my S5. The price point, I guess, for £3,000 to pick up the BS1H. You know, you can pick up a S1H used for two, two and a half grand now. And with that, you know, you get the ability to take stills and EVF, a touchscreen, uh, IBIS. I think I would still go for the BS1H. I think the lightweightness of it, the way that it would integrate with my EVA, with the batteries and the accessories, just makes it a bit of a no brainer rather than having to buy a new set of batteries for the S1H and the weight of that camera as well. It's a bit of a beast. So I guess the take home message is before physically shooting with a camera like the BS1H, I'd kind of discounted the cube form factor and I thought it, would, it wouldn't be a good fit for the way I work. I think using this camera has completely dispelled all of that. I totally get and understand this box form factor now, you know, after using it, I like it. I can work with it. And I'd definitely be willing to get a camera like this in the future for my type of work. I love that it has such a small footprint without necessarily sacrificing quality or, or the power of my camera. I love that. When you buy something like an Evo One or an FX6, these cameras have all the bells and whistles, you know, hardwired onto the camera body, which obviously makes it larger. Being able to remove those at a moment's notice in this modular way 
if you're checking it on a gimbal or a drone or you need it to be more lightweight. Uh, I think that gives you a lot more choice and flexibility when you're rigging a camera and I think I can get behind that. In lieu of stumping up for a larger compact cinema camera, this could be a really nice budget option. You can then build up the camera at your own pace and modify it for different shooting scenarios and basically all you need is a monitor and a battery and then you're good to go. I'm not 100% sure whether I'll pick one up yet. Let's watch this space. Drop me a comment below if you have any questions. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are about the BS1H. Do you own one? Are you thinking of getting one? Let me know down below and I'll try to get back to you. If you liked this video, maybe consider subscribing. I'm gonna be doing more of these vlogs in the future. This was my first one. Maybe let me know how I did. You can also find me over at Instagram, uh, so give me a follow if you want, and thanks for sticking to the end. Until next time, see ya.